In this podcast, we talk health, festivals, exercise, motivation, connecting, plant medicine, and lots more. This is Zestology. It's the podcast all about energy, vitality, and motivation. I'm Tony Wrighton, and yes, I'm still stuck inside, just like you. Normally, I record these podcast intros for Zestology out and about, but not in a moment. I'm, I'm almost getting used to being in my tinny spare room rather than walking down by the river. And this is, of course, Zestology, the podcast all about energy, vitality and motivation. Today's guest is Keith Norris, who's a world authority on healthy living and is also the founder of Paleo FX, which is pretty much the world's top health festival, health event. And it was supposed to be on in April. And this podcast was supposed to be coming out two months ago. And I was supposed to be in Austin for the conference. And then coronavirus struck. And like everything else, they were forced to cancel. The good news is, though, Paleo Effects have rescheduled for July. And what a nice opportunity it is to play a podcast out today that was recorded while we were blissfully unaware of the approaching pandemic. Isn't it brilliant that once upon a time we had nothing more to worry about than international travel and hanging out with other healthy people? Anyways, listen, it's absolutely brilliant that Paleo Effects are still going ahead, currently at least, and let's hope that continues. It's basically like a really fun festival. It's a lot of fun um, and it's very rewarding hanging out with like-minded people as well. Definitely encourage you to go. Um, Covers health and nutrition and fitness and sustainability and self-development as well. And yeah, it's just so nice to play out a podcast that isn't coronavirus focused, but is all about health and festivals and exercise. Here is Keith Norris on Zestology. Keith, we are recording. How are you? I am doing fantastic, fantastic. Good. Uh, Great to talk to you. uh, I came to Paleo FX a couple of years ago and absolutely loved it. Um, when people ask about it, I say it's not really a conference. It's more of a it's more of a festival, really, isn't it? It is exactly. I mean, if you could look at uh, where health and wellness might intersect with Burning Man, then you have a really good idea of what Paleo FX is. Well, yeah, yeah. because I mean, because it sounds a bit geeky if you go into a health conference, but actually it's full of parties and good times and you end up going out every night and meet, meeting loads of people. Um, and uh, I think, I, I mean, you know, I think I actually probably turned up by myself, but just made loads of friends as I went along and just really enjoyed it. So no, it is, uh, it's very social, isn't it? Right, it is. And it is, at the end of the day, it is an expression of human optimization. Yeah. And really, Michelle and I, when we when we created Paleo FX, we, we created an event that we would want to go to as attendees. And that's really the, the looking glass that we look through when, every year when we plan the event. How, how, when, did you, when did it start? So the uh, seeds of the event were planted in 2011. And uh, this was after Michelle and I had been on the uh, conference circuit for a while. And we thought, you know, what is missing from from the conference? Where where do we feel like um, either these conferences are are lacking? And we we settled on the idea that, you know, these conferences really aren't rubber meets the road. Right. So so even the educated lay person really wouldn't be able to take anything away and be able to go home and immediately implement something. And we said, uh, you know, I I think there is room in this sphere for a conference like that, for a hands-on conference, for a conference that is meant for the educated lay person, yes, and also there's people who are just starting on their journey of health and wellness, and they realize that they want to be the captains of their own health and wellness, but they don't know where to start. Right. Was it um, was it pretty so hairy in the early days? I mean, did you have it experience was, running conferences? <laughs> it was extremely hairy because, <laughs> you know, really neither of us really had any event experience. Michelle ran a, uh, a Michelle was a chef and she ran a catering company at the time. And I own gyms here in Austin, Texas. And, you know, if, if any of us had any kind of event planning experience, it was Michelle, but certainly not on this scale. Wow. Yeah. And then um, 
and then it gets so when was so the first event was so you started thinking about it in 2011 was the first event 2012 right. Right. 2012 was the first event. Um, we had about a six month runway, um, going into the first event and actually the, the business plan, if you could call it that, because it, it was nothing more than back of the napkin notes. And we wrote these <laughs> notes on a, that sounds uh, like my business airline, plans. Don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> on an airline napkin. Um, and we were flying back from LA to Austin, um, having been to a conference out in LA and we just jotted some notes down on a, on a napkin with the intent to pass it on to somebody else, you know, other event planners or, you know, other conference runners that we had talked to. And as we were, as we were discussing that, we're like, nobody's going to do this. You know, they all have, you know, they all have their plans for their event and no one's going to do this. And so by the time we got to Austin, we had settled that, well, I guess we'll do it. <laughs> so not, you know, and, Ignorance is bliss because we knew <laughs> nothing about running events. And really, if we had known anything about running events, we wouldn't have done it because we didn't realize that events are just money holes. You know, uh, we had yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And, uh, and you've got to put everything up front and it's just so super stressful. I mean, it, it, right. it sounds like a hellish job, but mind you, I, like for three <laughs> days, you probably have the best time ever when you're kind of the hero of the event that you've organized, but stressful in the meantime. It yeah. is super stressful for, you know, 362 days a year <laughs> and the three days of the actual event, it is just bliss. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing once it finally comes off. And we have a great supporting cast, a great team around us that allows Michelle and I just to be totally free and off the hook during those during those days. So, yeah. yeah. That's that's good. And and listen, I, I have a funny feeling that this podcast is a lot of people are actually going to book a ticket after listening to this podcast. I hope they do, because um, I had a brilliant time when I came and I've been to, you know, a couple of the, these other conferences around the world as well. And it is definitely a festival vibe and really good fun. And I, I'm actually getting married this year with a friend of mine who's also getting mad, married and we're best men for each other. And I've tried to persuade him to have a second stag do where we come to Paleo Effects this year. So you might see us there. <laughs> yes, I hope you do and uh, bring your significant others as well. I mean, it is, it is not your, you know, your parents, uh, kind of, uh, Keith, we're talking other. stag do here. We're not, we're not bringing significant others to a stag do. Sorry. As much, okay. as, as much as we love them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, come, come by yourselves then. Austin is a beautiful place for a stag party to say it. <laughs> like a healthy stag party yeah a healthy one, of course, yeah so uh, i mean obviously it's, it's it's as you say it's now grown into a beast and it's a huge great thing i mean it's a huge conference center where you have it um over the years what are the kind of themes that have impacted on you most at paleo effects i mean obviously the word paleo is in the title but it's not really a conference just about being paleo is it Right. It is, you know, it started off as a paleo centric, uh, strength and conditioning type of event. Um, and that laid the, that laid the foundation for what we finally became, which was a human optimization event. Um, this, and I, I should back up and say that paleo FX is really a co collaboration with the speakers, with the attendees, with Michelle and I, with our input. But this is a co-collaborative event. This is not Keith and Michelle's idea of what paleo is from on high. Um, we take input from this community. And, and this event has just morphed into this uh, human optimization is the best way I can put it. It's a human optimization event. So, you know, if you think if it affects your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, your financial health, your relational health, your tribal health, community health. All of those things are important, and we explore all of those areas at Paleo FX. So it is a human optimization summit. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, when I first kind of I started training in NLP about fifteen years ago. Actually, that was kind of why I first got into kind of um, improving myself and wellness and everything else. And then after a couple of years, I thought, I tell you, what, I could 
do a couple of audiobooks about this. And I never quite knew how to describe what I did. And I kind of settled on high performance, but I never felt that was very descriptive. And I think human optimization, I do like that as well, but it sounds it sounds quite abstract, doesn't it? So sometimes I want something right. a bit a little bit more specific than that. Like, you know, improving the way the brain works or getting five mm-hmm. percent more from your body or whatever else. But I suppose it's as good a term as any human optimization. Right. And I think everybody's everybody's journey to their own optimization starts at a different place, right? So we're all um, we're all masters in one of those areas. I happen to, you know, here in Austin, the group of people who I hang out with and associate more than anyone is the entrepreneurial group. And um, these people have the financial part of it pretty much nailed, right? So if you looked at the pillars of health, they're pretty well set financially. But many of them are train wrecks in other areas. Their health is falling apart. Their relationships are staggering. They don't feel healthy or fulfilled inside. And it it is our opinion that to be a full functioning, healthy, optimized person, you have to have all of those pillars shored up. And really, that's what Paleo FX has become. You know, let's find out. Let's find out where you're good. Okay, great. Now let's find out where you're lacking and let's also realize that you are the captain of your own health and wellness. We're going to give you the information. We're going to put you in touch with, uh, with a tribe that can support you and we're going to get the ship righted and fixed and set you on your way. And once you get all of those other pillars shored up, guess what? Your financial status will increase Yeah, and it's just a natural byproduct. That's quite interesting, the, the whole entrepreneurial thing. Um, I mean, you know, going back to the NLP again, it, I, I've found a lot of people who are drawn to the paleo effects world, but also the neuro-linguistic programming world, are mm-hmm. they tend to be very high achieving, often quite left brain, often very driven, and they they might be hugely, inverted commas, successful on paper, <laughs> but actually, as, right. you, as you say, every area, of, there's not a massive amount of balance. And actually, I, I fall into that category as well. I find it really hard to do less, to switch off, to accept and let mm-hmm. go. Um, is that something that, I mean, like, presumably... I mean, we're recording this in the build up to paleo effects. You know, you must be really like looking at the numbers each day, seeing what, what's coming in and what's going out. It's probably quite a stressful time. How, how is your balance levels going? Yeah, it's super, super stressful. And I think this is um, one of the areas, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the areas that I've been exploring personally is how do I maintain being a very, very successful entrepreneur without being stressed out? Um, and and we could, this is probably a whole other discussion, um, a plant medicine journey, lots of, lots of work in, in that area, consciousness exploration. But I've come to find out that at the, at the root, the root of my stress stems from my not being able to trust that the universe has my back. And I know that sounds very woo and, um, you know, and I, I can speak freely about this in Austin because we have a very, um, uh, woo community here. Oh, you, you feel really, free to get woo on this podcast. That's absolutely okay. fine, Keith. Go woo. Yeah. It, yeah. And so, you know, the more and more and more that I realize that the universe has my back, the universe has put me here, I think, to be able to promote this show and to help other people in their, in their health and wellness journey. And the idea being that you know, Tony, if I can, if I can help you become healthier, you then have a springboard to express your genius into the world. And I don't have many, many gifts. Um, I was not the best student in school. Um, but I do have the gift of health and I do have the gift of teaching health. And I'm also a super connector of sorts. And I've put those talents together and Michelle has other talents that she's brought to the table. We put those talents together and created Paleo FX in the hopes that I can make you healthy, Tony, and every person who comes to Paleo FX healthy in, in some way throughout one of those pillars, I can provide you with the information and the network and the tribe to make you a healthier person and thereby give you a springboard to express whatever particular genius you have into the world. And in that way, that makes the world a better place. And, and just on that... Um 
kind of trusting that the, the world's got your back. How did you, mm-hmm. how did you, or, or how are you working on that? Was it plant medicine? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was, well, it's plant medicine part one. Part two is working with uh, the best facilitators in the world in the integration side of things because, um, you know, you can go into a plant medicine journey and many times you come out with more questions than what you went in with. I bet, yeah. And the key to it is ongoing integration, 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 integration. Um, because there are things that I started my plant medicine, uh, journeys maybe six, seven years ago now. And there are things even now that come up in integration that I first realized six years ago and they didn't make any sense. But, um, you know, with time and with integration, they did become to make sense. And it's just, it's been a wonderful path. Yeah. And I, I, I really, I, it's really good for me because as I said, I am quite left brain to talk about this stuff. And, you know, it's always interesting where a change happens and you can't really explain why it's happened. And I certainly find that, you know, around certain forms of therapy that I've done, I just can't, I can't explain really what's happened there, but it's just, but I know that it has happened and it's massively different right. and, and that the process has allowed me, you, you, you know, if you were to logically sit down and say, yeah, but what actually works about this is very hard to right. say, apart from the fact that it just does and it's amazing. Right. And I find myself again, because I'm surrounded by entrepreneurs here in Austin and it's taken me a long time to realize that I I can only control actions. I can't control outcome. And that took me a long time for that to settle into my body and for my body to understand that. Right. So I was, um, growing up, starting off in athletics and moving into the military, then moving into corporate America. And then finally in entrepreneurship, it was all an eye centered thing. Right. So I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Gary Vanderchuk. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, the, the the guy who does the, the guy who's like talks at about a hundred words a, a second and uh, right. talk about wine and he's very entertaining, isn't he? He's very entertaining, yeah. and he would be kind of the epitome of of what we've come to know as Puma energy, right? These are the entrepreneurs who are just on a constant cycle of hunt, kill, move on to the next project, never satisfied, never satisfied, never satisfied, never yeah. satisfied, and I was that person up until about a year and a half ago. It was the next project, it was the next thing, and I was quote unquote winning by conquering, but I was never satisfied, right? It was kind of a way for me to keep score. Mm. And it was totally centered on this all resides on me. And I've, I've come to find out that that is good for a while, it got me where I, where I am today, that highly competitive, highly motivated, uh, energy got me where I am today, but it will not get me to where I, where I want to go. And this is just a new energy that I'm moving into. And a large part of moving into that energy is releasing into the universe and understanding that the universe has my back. I would not even have been able to say that a year and a half ago. I would be like, the universe doesn't have my back. This is all on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've moved into this new energy that, yeah, the universe does has, it does have my back. It doesn't mean that I don't work, but it means I can only control my, my effort. I can only control, you know, what I do. And then the rest I just release to other. And that significantly reduces my stress. What about some of the other things that you do that you've kind of learned from doing the conference over the years? Obviously, I mean, some of my memories of coming to Paleo Effects, obviously the there was a brilliant uh, natural wine party, which I very much enjoyed. Right. Um, and there's all sorts of um, infrared saunas. Um, and I think there's flotation tanks. I mean, there's so much going on. Ice baths. Um, there's lots of different supplements that you can take. Great speakers. I think I saw Aubrey Marcus talking there. Um, what are some of the other things that you've taken away from being at the helm of this ship? Right. Well, I can tell you that every day, and it doesn't matter what day it is, and it doesn't matter how hectic the day is, I take at least an hour and a half out of that day for myself. Right. And sometimes this drives our team members just absolutely crazy because the I mean, we could be in a world of of movement and I'm just boom, I check out for an hour and a half. Now, 
I know my, and when I say check out, what I do is I go work out. For me, uh, I'm, I'm very movement oriented. I have, if my body can move every day, whether it's sprinting or weightlifting or bike riding or just something like that, some kind of a physical expression, I found that I can, I, I can work just about every day as long as I have that at, at, at minimum. I also need time with Michelle. I also need time to back off and relax. But if I have those two things, and um, and I would add sleep to that mix as well, as long as I can work out, as long as I can recover, as long as I have time with Michelle, then I can do this ongoing. And that's coupled with my ability to say and be comfortable in saying that the universe has my back. You know, I do what I can do, and I don't control the outcome. And I think that's one of the biggest things, the biggest changes in my psyche has been I don't control the outcome. I can put forth a good effort. I can do what I can do. And at the end of the day, I have to turn it over to the universe and let the universe take over. So and if it succeeds, fabulous. If it fails, well, I'll find something else to do. So the exercise is obviously really important to you as well. Very Interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by my podcast partners today, P3OM, the amazing probiotic that, very excited to say, you can try for free. I mean, as you know, everyone's facing challenges at the moment. The recent virus pandemic is definitely increasing our stress, as we've been talking about in this podcast with Julia, but also the financials, the sickness, the quarantines, and just the general worry about our health. There's not a lot of people who haven't been touched by it. And one of the highest risk factors is a weakened immune system. So that is what we are focusing on on Zestology in the month of May with P3OM. And you might have heard me talk about bioptimizers over the last month or two. I asked my friends there if they could help out during these tough times. And they have agreed to give away a free bottle of P3OM. This is their patented probiotic until the end of this month. I mean, I'm a real fan of P3OM. I've been talking about it quite a bit on this podcast. Um, it's it's an excellent probiotic. There's a good reason I've been speaking about it so much because it helps eliminate bad bacteria and rapidly boosts your gut health. And it's one of the strongest probiotics that you will ever find. So if you go to P3OM slash Zestology free, that's P3OM slash Zestology free, you will automatically get access to your free bottle of P3OM. Simple. Um, and it's a uh, one per household. And also, it's not available in the UK. Unfortunately, we're working on that, or they're working on that. Um, but if you are in the UK, you can head to buyoptimizers.co.uk and use the code Zestology for 10% off. Rest of you, get a free bottle of P3OM. Head to p3om.com slash Zestology free. Now, back to the show. So you own gyms as well, do you, in, in Austin? Well, I did. I uh, sold them about two years ago because Paleo Effects just got <laughs> just got too right, unwieldy. Yeah. Um, as you know, and Michelle was the first one to give up her love, so she loved being a chef. And in the early years of Paleo Effects, she was it. She was pretty much a one man show, one woman show. Um, and so she she sold her business first to be able to run Paleo Effects. And for the next uh, next few years, I would help where I could, um, but but really we we never thought that Paleo FX would be our sole entity. We always thought it would just be kind of a side project and kind of a fun project. Um, and you know, it came a point. It was you know we either quit doing this Paleo FX and move back into other things, or I sell the gyms and get out of that business and come come on you know, full time at Paleo FX and help out there. So for me, that was a, uh, that was, that was a heart wrenching decision. But at the end of the day, I thought I can affect more people through Paleo FX than I can through the gyms. So this is a choice that I went into with eyes wide open. Good stuff. I'm interviewing, um, Dr. Chris Shade after this. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I met this. him at Paleo FX. He's, he's brilliant. And it's, it's, it's interesting. You just stroll the, the floors and meet interesting people. Um, and, uh, he's a good one, isn't he? He is. Uh, he is. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, the the networking at Paleo FX is like none other. And the vibe on the floor, and this is kind of where the where my reference to Burning Man comes from, the vibe on the floor is just super elevated. You will see more hugs, more kisses, more high fives than any other conference I've I've ever been to. Yeah, you also mean, tribe loves one another. You'll also eat more in as healthy snacks than you've ever right. imagined is possible. <laughs> right, um, and each one of those snacks, Tony, has been highly vetted. If yeah. it's a food product, well, if it's any vendor on the Paleo FX floor, they have had to jump through mega hoops to get right. on the floor. Really? We don't let yeah. just anybody. I, I remember hearing that yes. about the food yes. actually. Um, that that you right. only allow certain snacks there. Um, right. Yeah. We have 70 some odd banned ingredients. If, if a product has one of these ing- ingredients, they, they can't be on the floor. And we, we have a very, very tight quality control program, um, for people who, who do come onto the floor because we want to be a super high quality, um, show and we want people to be secure. We want people to bring, to be able to bring their kids and let their kids sample absolutely everything and not be worried that they they might get sick or have a, a reaction or anything like that. We want the foods. And, and we believe that for for everybody, for adults as well. If it if we wouldn't put it in our mouths, then it's not going to be a paleo effect for. It's perfect stag do territory, really, isn't it? <laughs> is that, I mean, uh, people listening to this may be it thinking he is. should go. Like, I don't worry, I'm having a normal stag do, like a different stag do as well. But this is like, or bachelor parties, you might say. But this is like an extra one just for me and my right. mate who are both getting married, I think. Um, right. Well, you'll be happy to know that uh, Dry Farm Wines will be back out. So you can drink. Um, drink at liberty and not have to worry about waking up with a hangover so good. yeah yeah <laughs> I, good. i'm good friends with uh with todd and the dry farm wines crew and um, oh he's I, a fabulous person i love their team i love yeah. their product um and he he's an example um we don't let just any wine come to paleo effects i mean they have to be highly highly vetted well keith i have to tell you he is adamant that i could record a podcast with him and drink two bottles of his wine and i would feel fine mm-hmm. the next day during the podcast and i, and I actually don't believe that's true it does make I, it it's good wine but i that's not gonna happen <laughs> I, i'm telling you i i was not a believer at first either because wine will i'm one of those people if i have a couple of glasses of wine i wake up the next day and i feel like i've been kicked in the head um but you know take it maybe this is an n equals one example or maybe maybe it's just todd and i but everybody that i have talked to has been wow you know i can i can drink a good amount of this wine and wake up feeling fine yeah and there's reasons for that i mean it doesn't have the the sulfites and nitrates it's not uh, it's a wine that's of low sugar content and i could go on and on and on it's very very clean um but yeah but that's just an example of one product at Paleo FX. It's been highly vetted. Definitely, yeah. So what about um, something I've asked everybody on this podcast, Keith? One book that you would recommend, and it can be any book. It doesn't have to be your favorite book ever or a book that's – it could be the most recent book that you've read that you enjoyed. Um, one book and one tip for living with more energy, vitality, and motivation. What would you go for? Right. Well, let me give you two books. How about that? I'll give yeah, you. I'll give you two that, that just from the top of my mind. Number one is Tribe by Sebastian Younger. Okay. Um, this book, I think, illuminates a blind spot in in uh, Western society or first world society. That being that tribe is so very, very important to health and well being. And he goes through examples of why this is he goes through examples of things that bring people together and it's usually hardship right it's usually a natural disaster it's usually uh, warfare something of that manner but in retrospect the people who have gone through those crises have to a person said that those were the times that they felt the most connected to other people ever and that translated into happiness. Even in the midst of chaos, they felt more connected and more happy. And I personally went through this when I was in the military many, many years ago, and this knowledge wasn't available. Um, and I would come home from deployment 
and be miserable. I mean, the whole time I was on deployment, I am thinking about getting home, getting back to my family, my wife and kids. And the moment I got home, I was depressed and I could not figure out why. I mean, this is what I've been waiting for. You know, I've been deployed for nine months. I'm finally home. And why is it that I'm depressed? And the only thing I can think of is about going back into deployment. Right. Why is it? Um, well, Tribe explains why that is. I thought I was crazy. I, I thought I was certifiably crazy. But after, and I wish that I would have had access to this book and this information back then because I went through a, a very dark period during that time thinking I was crazy, being depressed, and thinking, why in the world would I want to go back to that element? Why? I'm here with my wife and kids. This is this makes no sense. It was very stressful on our relationship. Um, but now I know why. So that's one book I would, I would have people read. The other one is Christopher Ryan's book, civilized to death. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, lo- I uh, love that book. Yeah. Fabulous book. Yeah, I've, had, I've just... had him on the podcast as well, actually. Right. Has, has a, he ever spoken that... at paleo effects? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes he I'd has. love to see him speak live. Oh, he's incredible. Yeah. Um, he spoke at paleo effects after his sex at dawn book yeah. came out. Um, unfortunately, he won't be at this Paleo FX because he's on uh, already on book tour for Civilized to Death, and the dates didn't work out for him. But uh, yeah, we'd love to have him back. Yeah. And that book really illuminates the the it, Michelle and I call this the human zoo that we live in, and to the extent um, we are zoo animals, right? The environment that we live in is not natural to us, mm. and to the extent that we realize that and can take steps to to fix that. And there are, there are many things we can do to fix that. But the first step is realization. Um, and the more you, the more you claim that you are free and not in a zoo, you can be guaranteed that you are one of the most captive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. And in fact, Michelle and I have a, uh, a book we're working on now that's, that's floating around, uh, publishers right now. We're trying to ink a deal. And it's kind of one step beyond civilized to death. And that would be, okay, these are the reasons you are locked down in a zoo and that you're a zoo anim- animal. Now what to do about it? So uh, we, we endeavor to answer that question, what to do about it. Wow. Okay. And then what about one? I'm very pleased to hear that uh, you guys are writing a book and also that you're a big Chris Ryan fan because yes. he is one of my absolute favorites. I feel that's a, a mark of somebody who knows what's going on in the world. If they like Chris Ryan, he is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then what about one tip then for living with more energy, vitality and motivation? You know, for me, it's movement. It's that daily, daily movement. I, and I can tell there's, there's times when I travel, when I, you know, am just, um, out of my, out of my routine, um, don't have access to, uh, open spaces to run or a gym to go to. And it just saps my energy. The, it, to the extent that I can get out. And as soon as we're done recording, I'm heading out to the gym too. <laughs> okay, of the day. Yeah. But for me, that gives me zest and vitality for the rest of the day and the rest of my life. My body lives to move. And I think really everybody's body lives to move. We evolved as obligate movers and opportunistic eaters. Um, And I think we have to pay homage to that, to that ancestry. These bodies were meant to move. They were not meant to be static. And to the extent you can move them, they're, they're almost like a self winding watch from back in the day. The more you move, the more vitality you gain from that movement. Keith, and for is, and for me, that happens to be weightlifting, yeah, primarily. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprinting and uh, kind of I call it bar work. Um, that kind of you know pull ups, chin ups, and various free weight bar exercises. I will combine with sprinting. Um, and for instance, yesterday I, I went on a 20 mile fast paced bike ride. So I mix it up and I, I do in a day, whatever I feel like doing today, I feel like lifting weights. So I'll be in the gym. Um, tomorrow, I don't know. I'll determine that when I wake up, what is my body telling me? And I've gotten very, very good at listening to my body and what my body wants. Well, I will let you go and work on your guns, Keith. And uh, <laughs> uh, listen, it's excellent to talk. Um, where can people find out more about you and obviously about Paleo Effects as well? 
Right. So www.paleofx.com. I would encourage all of your listeners to go there, scoop up some tickets, um, and come to Austin in, in April. It's a beautiful place to be. It is a fantastic opportunity to mix and mingle with like-minded people. And I, I, I guarantee your listeners, it is not like any other summit that you've ever been to. Yeah. It is fun. It is movement. It is partying. It is all of those things. Um, and that's, you know, people can find me on, um, on Instagram, um, at theory number two practice. So theory to practice. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. Um, I run a blog that I sometimes still write to this blog has been going on for, I don't know, 12 years now. Um, and that is theory to practice as well. You can just Google that up. You can Google theory to practice and Keith Norris and that'll lead you right to the blog. Good stuff. And um, well, I mean, people listening, I, I might be able to meet them at Paleo FX this year as well. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the stag do plan. <laughs> the Absolutely. extra stag, hey, the extra stag goes. But I'll um, give your, uh, I'll give your listeners a code if they okay. want to use. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sales. Yeah. It's Keith K E I T H thirty, the number three zero, um, and you can enter that. Uh, you can enter that at checkout. That'll give you thirty percent off the tickets. Ah, oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's like uh, it's like going to a festival for a weekend. So I would heartily recommend it. Um, right. Keith, look, enjoy enjoy the movement for the rest of your day. Really good to chat again, and um, maybe see you in April. Absolutely, uh, come up and give me a hug, Johnny. I will a man a, right. a manly hug. I will do a exactly manly that. Manly hug. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Keith. Good to talk, and uh, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir, brother. That's it for today's Zestology. Obviously, quite a few references to the festival going ahead in April, and now it is July. But yeah, you can still get tickets for Paleo FX, and as well as supporting them, I just think you'll have a great time if you do go. And we all need better health in these trying, testing times, especially when we're staying in a lot and potentially eating rather a lot as well. How's the self-isolation from the fridge going? This episode, quick reminder, is brought to you by P3OM. And if you've been baking slightly more than usual and um, eating slightly too many sweet treats, then you can try P3OM, the amazing probiotic that helps strengthen your immune system. Because, you know, I mean, immunity really is almost all determined by your gut health. And that is why P3OM is so important. And they are my podcast partners for today's episode. If you head to p 3 om slash Zestology free, you will automatically get a free bottle of P3OM. That doesn't apply in the UK. They are working on it, I'm told. But if you're in the UK, you can head to bioptimizers.co.uk and use the code Zestology. You'll get a little chunk off, 10%, I think. If you're anywhere else in the world, and about 65% of all podcast listeners to Zestology are, um, you can head to p3om.com slash Zestology free and start blasting that bad bacteria. And it's free, so you've got nothing to lose, really. Thanks very much for listening. Hope um, over the next week things continue to slightly improve. I know lockdown is being eased in some places and it feels a long time until we're back to normal, but there is a certain new normal that is quite enjoyable. I'm certainly sleeping better than before and doing more exercise than ever before and meditating more, so that's not all all bad. There is a certain anxiety about, well, health and the health of one's loved ones who might not be quite as kind of um, young or as strong as us. Um, And I think that's the same for everybody, really. It's incredibly nice to have the time with the family and it's incredibly sad and it's incredibly freeing to have all this spare time and it's incredibly trying having to worry about one's loved ones. Probably haven't expressed the ups and downs of coronavirus that well but that's what i'm thinking anyway have a great week thanks as always for listening to zestology and for your support and i'll see you next time